Well, hello everyone. My name is Paul Tilly, and I'll be your instructor for this course. The whole origins of this program came about, about I'm gonna say almost 10 years ago now. The, um, the carpentry instructor in Clarenville, good buddy of mine, Peter Trope. Peter, um, Peter came to me one day and he said, you know, one of the things the trades is missing is some business skills. He said, you know, because a lot of tradespeople, like you are well aware, uh, a lot of tradespeople either A, go into business for themselves, you know, they start a little mom and pop, maybe a rental store or these sorts of things. And realistically, they have no business training whatsoever. None. It's not part of the curriculum in schools. Nothing. And he also said, you know, if, if you're not out in your own business, you really might be supervising people or, or managing people. And really, we haven't done anything in that in our trades program either. So anyway, Peter and I talked about it. We brought it along to the college. The college then worked with uh, the other colleges over in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. So effectively, this is across Atlantic Canada now when we built this. So we built this program with that individual in mind. Someone who is a tradesperson who says to themselves, I want to be in management or they end up in management. Or alternatively, they want to start their own business. So it's very much focused on someone who sees some management or leadership in their future. That's that's what this course is all about, okay? To bring you to that point. And to, to fill in some of those gaps that a lot of tradespeople miss in their training. So that that's the basic origins of that. So zoom it up. Uh, that was 10 years ago, so seven, year, uh, seven years later, uh, between going through all of the colleges and jumping the hoops and doing all the, the material, we've got uh, a company in Nova Scotia develop the basic concept of the curriculum. Okay, what do we need to talk about? What are the, the major core areas? They did some research on that. They did some focus groups. And this is why we have five modules in this program that came out of that research. Uh, Peter and I worked on developing the content for this three years ago. So actually, this is the third offering of this course now, and it's always evolving. So your input is important here because I'm relying on you guys who are out there in the field, who have the real experience, to say to me, yeah, it doesn't work that way, or how come you didn't talk about that, or that sort of thing. So as we go along, if there's anything that, that really doesn't click with you or you think that is missing here, let me know and I'll make sure it gets incorporated in, okay? Um, <clears throat> so the basic program goal then is, is broken into giving you guys the basic skills in five basic areas. The, the first area that we're gonna talk about in this program is human resource management. In fact, that's what we're gonna start next week, human resource management. I have found that tradespeople and general don't have to be tradespeople. Anyone who goes into to business, either accidentally or purposely, that's one of the biggest challenges they face is human resource management. And that's a fancy word for dealing with people, okay? And it, it's a skill that is rare to be able to do it well. And part of the reason that it's so rare is that the basic concepts of managing people are not taught or not, they're not discussed or, you know, nobody knows about it. Nobody knows about it. So when we talk, when we're looking at the human resource section, this first six weeks, what we're doing is we're breaking each of these things into six weeks. So there's five modules, six weeks each, 30 weeks. The first one really deals with this issue of managing people. So human resource management is our first one. Then we're going to go on and look at financial management which is again, you know, another issue that's not taught in any of the programs. And how do you look at a, a financial statement? How do you, you know, what is a financial statement, first of all? And what does it say? What kind of information can you pull from it? That sort of thing. And if you're a small business person or someone who's looking at numbers for a company, it's important to have a little bit of a clue how to do it. You know, and again, the average person is not exposed to that sort of thing. So that's one of the things we're gonna be looking at. We're also going to be looking at marketing and sales. And again, another topic that is not rocket science, but the average Joe who goes into the trade or goes into business 
has no idea about what are some of the concepts that they can apply to make that effort so much more easy. And uh, so we're looking at that. The fourth thing we're looking at is something called operations management. Now, when I did operations management in school, I said, oh, this is a big, hairy subject. And it is a big, hairy subject because there are so many components to it. You know, But we're going to look at the components that are related to the trades, particularly what trades people need to know in terms of operation management. And that will include things like project planning, timelines, uh, uh, production, you know, how production should work and occupational health and safety. These are real tangible takeaways from operations management. So we're going to look at that in, in that particular course. And the final course, the final unit, I'll call it in this course, is business planning. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't intend to go into business for myself. But I would prefer to call the last course planning more than business planning, okay? Uh, it that course teaches you the concepts, the basic concepts of planning. What do you need to do in order to plan something in order to be able to execute it well? And so it could be anything from running a business to uh, looking at a particular project. So those are the kind of things that, that we're going to be looking at there. The um, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this slideshow here today not too long and just give you kind of a heads up so at least then you can think about some questions that you might want to ask and if you don't think about them today that's fine but you might have some questions as we go as we go along so our basic objective of this why are we here the the whole idea of the seal is really geared toward journey people who have some consideration for being a business person. Either they're going to be managing people or managing a business, okay? So it's going to give you those basic skills to take your job, your position, and yourself to that next level. I'm teaching this course. I'm the instructor, but I, I, I have done this now for how long have I been at this? I have been at this, I'll tell you. I have been at this business for over 30 years, and uh, and I am um, well, an instructor in college, number one, but I'm also involved in a lot of organizations, including the town of Clarenville. And I'm doing the stuff that we're doing in here every single day as part of my uh, role with the town and with some of the various organizations that I'm involved in. White Hill Ski Resort, for example, I'm involved there. So a lot of this stuff is very relevant to a lot of the things I do right now. But as I say, I've been teaching the college for 30 years and doing course development and online instruction as well as live instruction for quite a while. And there I am at Placentia campus. So here's the here's how the modules are laid out. Now, as I say, six weeks, each one is six weeks. And the first one we're going to do, module one, is called human resource management. And just in terms of here are the key things that's going to come out of human resource management, okay? Allocate human resources for trades related business. How do you figure out how to, you know, how to put people into positions? What do you need to do there? That that sort of thing. Um, and then to think about how in the heck do you find people to put into those positions? This recruitment, hiring, and the, the one that nobody likes terminating. But that's a trick into itself because if you don't get the right person, let's assume that you're an employer, you're spending $25 an hour on someone, you bring them in, and they're awful. You know, think of the cost to you. you, you you're spending this money for someone who's not doing the job. You're going to have to get rid of that person, which is going to cause you grief. And you're going to have to recruit a new person. So you got to start all over again. So recruitment is a really big issue that a lot of people miss. And if they had some of the basic skills in terms of recruitment, probably you could avoid those problems, right? It's, it's more or less an avoiding issue. Develop and establish personnel policies. This is something more of a management than anything else. But if you're thinking about, okay, I got to hire people on, what are the, I'll call it the rules of the game. Uh, the personnel policy sets out the rules of the game. Why do we want rules of the game? Because that way we can ensure everyone's treated equally and fairly. If we make it up as we go along, we could run into some problems, particularly the law. And the way that the legal system is set up now for work, it could be very dangerous to go 
making it up as you go along in terms of costing you money if someone brings you to court or something for a wrongful dismissal or something like that. Uh, figuring out lead employees, you know, who could be a lead employee, what what are management potential, and identifying the importance of something called the succession plan. Now, succession plan is really geared. We won't have the thing I judge on on my student, you know, where we are with this. If you're an older person, let's assume you're in your 50s and you're thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to retire in the next few years. This concept of a succession plan, being able to sell your business or pass it on to someone is going to be more important than if you're just starting, okay? But effectively, a succession plan in terms of human resource management is saying, what am I going to do for myself, but also for my employees? If I were an employer and I know someone ever going to really retire, what do I need to do? So that, that's going to take us six weeks in. The next module, again, we'll get two modules in before the Christmas holidays. The next module is dealing with financial management. This is the one that I find, the feedback I've gotten, is the one that's most foreign to everyone because they don't deal with financial management as a general rule, okay? And we're going to look at this idea of financial statements because every once in a while, when you're a business person or a small business person, someone throws a financial statement at you and says, here's my business, here's where it is. And if you don't know if it's fit to eat or to be able to look at it and be able to ask good questions, or if your banker gives it to you and you, you know you say, well, I don't know anything about this. So the idea is to give you some background on what financial statements are and how they're used and how, how useful they are, how important it is to you to understand some of the basic components of it. But this issue of collecting credit or getting credit, you know, if you're going to start your business. So, you know, Jeremy, if you're looking for money to get a business started, uh, what are some of the things you need to know there? And uh, a big problem, Revenue Canada could be your friend or your enemy. If you don't remit government-related financial requirements, for, for example, EI or CPP, if you don't give them, send them along at the right time, middle of the month, so the government will breathe down your neck like nothing else. So you need to be aware of what we mean by this idea of remittances and what the obligations to an employer are to remittances for the government. And finally, we got this issue of cash flow. And this is the life and breath of a company. It's, it's like the dollars and cents that keep your business going. If you run out of money, your business is going to starve to death. It's like running out of air, right? So what can you do in order to manage this concept of cash flow? So you have an understanding of it and to be able to manage it. So that's the first two. The third module, which we'll do immediately after Christmas, deals with the idea of marketing and sales. Now, I don't like the word sales because sales indicates that you're selling something, you're pushing something. But the basic concepts of marketing are applicable to every business, regardless if you're really selling anything or not. Because if you're in a service business, you are selling yourself, okay? You're not selling a tangible product, but you're selling yourself. So you want to understand, and, and Jeremy, you mentioned about Markets research, you know, how do you conduct market research? What is market research? What are some of the pitfalls of market research? Uh, pricing, you know, what should we do in order to put a price on something? How do you price something? Um, market strategies, which is just figuring out how you can enter the market and capture as most, most sales as possible. Uh, selling products and services. What, what are some of the basic things you need to do over there? And the idea of customer relationship marketing. The fourth module is operations management it's it's the most meaty module because it has a there's so many things as i say to operations management but we're going to look at some key ones that relate to the trade and businesses related to the trade so inventory is a big issue you know if you're a tradesperson and you're uh for example if you're um oh i don't know a millwright i'll, I'll be a millwright and you think to yourself okay I'm, i've got a business selling tools what kind of tools should you buy how much how much should you have in order to sell, if you're selling tools, for example? How much should you keep in inventory? What are the, what are the pluses of inventory? What are some of the challenges of inventory? Scheduling production, that's important for any small business person. If you're building a house, how do you make sure that the house gets built on time? This issue of scheduling and, and product, you know, just managing the project is really a, a, a big one that people should be aware of and some of the tools that can be done in order to do that. Estimating costs, job cost estimating is important if you're going to win tenders. Quality control issues, that, that's important. A lot of organizations insist on a certain quality control standard. For example, uh, 
I, I suppose some of the organizations you will work for, you know, Voices Bay or, or uh, Irving, they have ISO ratings and ISO, part of the ISO is to ensure that the workers uh, have the certain skills to ensure that workplace is safe, dealing with health and safety. Um, occupational health and safety, manage meetings. Now there's an interesting one too. You know, what is the purpose of a meeting? How should you manage it? How can you get the most out of it? And organizing business information. And finally, this last module, really, it only has a couple of bullet points, but they're important ones, you know. Strategic planning is the first one. Now, strategic planning doesn't have anything to do with business planning until you actually plan a business. Because strategic planning is relevant to everybody and everything that's involved in business. How can you plan? Okay, the basic concept of planning. And then the second part deals with how can we use that planning in order to build a business? Okay, so that's develop a business plan. So those are the five modules, you know, and they're nice tight points in them. And, and that was what the, that was, those points came out of the research that was done for most tradespeople. But that doesn't mean that we can't include more. If you got particular issues that you want me to address, you let me know and I'll make sure they're addressed. In terms of the program schedule, here is the schedule, tentative schedule. I'm assuming that everything is good with this. We're going to start our first module now. So this is November 7th week of, and we're going to carry through till December 16th, which is six weeks time. We'll take a break for Christmas on January 3rd. We're going to start up again with our next module, financial management. That will run until February 10th. Then marketing and sales, which runs from February 13th to March 31st. We have a break in there first week of March. Then operations management from April 3rd to May 12th. And finally business planning from May 15th to June 23rd. Okay, so operationalizing all this, how do we make this happen? How are we going to flow through this? And this is what you guys were concerned about if you're away, for example, okay? Every week, here's, here's what... I've done, and this has worked well, every week I hold what's called a virtual class. So we have a class. It's one hour each work, uh, each week, using this virtual classroom. So you know how to get here because you're here today, obviously. So we're going to talk about um, the module, each of these modules that I showed you in here. I'll just pull up one. So, for example, obtain a managed inventory. That will be a topic for that night. A scheduled production will be a topic for another night. So that's how that's going to work. It's going to be kind of laying out each of those topics in each of those nights. So it keeps it to a nice discrete unit, right? And I'm proposing that we do it at Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. Okay, but let's assume you're working. So, you know, at this point, Jacob say, oh, I might not be here. Okay, good. Well, that's fine. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to say Wednesdays at 7 o'clock, and it seems like, you know, I, I don't know, Wednesdays 7 o'clock works for some people, doesn't work for other people, but I'm going to record the sessions, and not only am I going to record them, I'm going to tighten them up, record them, so I'm going to record them, and then I'm going to edit them so that the major core content is here in a video, okay? And then I'm going to post it, so it gets posted the next day. I, I'm not that quick. I got it takes a while to, to work the system, but effectively, the material that we're dealing with that week will be covered in that class on that Wednesday. If you cannot make the class, it's up there in a recording, an edited recording, so it's nice and tight. And that way, you can watch it at your leisure. And if you're away, let's assume that you have no internet access. Well, you can watch it at your leisure when you get home. The way that I got the course set up is. Each module is six weeks long. And maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. Yeah, each module is six weeks long. So that means that if you're going to two, this is why I asked you, is it a two-week rotation or a three-week rotation on? If, if you're on a two-week rotation, you're guaranteed to be home during some of it, right? Guaranteed to be home during some of it. And the rest of it, you can kind of cut it up and, and, and take it with you. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to record the session. And you, during each of these modules, each of these modules have little things for you to do. There's discussions. And what we mean by discussions is I'm going to pose a, a question for you. And you're going to answer it that week. Okay? 
and a 50% online quizzes. So there's an online quiz at the end of the module. There's a little online quiz. There's no, there's no specific due dates on those discussion posts or online quiz. The thing is what I say is get it done, get them all done before the end of the module. So if you're gone away, don't sweat it because you'll be back before the module is over or you can get it done before the module is over. And if you can't, then you'll talk to me and you'll say, I can't get it done because I'm gone. And I'll say, fine, that's good. We'll work out, we'll work something out. But the fact of the matter is I've given you the full block of time in order to get the, the things that need to be done, done. So if you're away for a week or two weeks, that shouldn't really affect it. Besides that, I've got some, I got printability added to this. So if you wanna, if you're home and you know you're going away, you could print off some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about, some of the material, take it with you, read it in your leisure time. And when you come back, then you can look at the uh, videos and you can do the online session. So again, to make it as flexible as possible for you, because I know and I hope that the people that are in this course are busy working, right? So they will make accommodations to make sure that you can get the material covered. That's my goal is that you get something out of it and we'll make it work for you, okay? Um, just a little bit more on these discussion posts. Some of you might say, well, what exactly is a discussion post? So in this piece of software is a learning management system is the fancy word for it. In this D2L, this thing that we're in here now, this, this program, there's something called a discussion board, which is um, it's like email, okay? You post it up, everyone can see it. So it's sort of like Twitter or whatever. And effectively, I'm gonna pose a question there. I think, uh, I don't know if it's every single class, but it's almost every single class. And your task is to write no more than I've got written on this page in response to that. So generally, okay, have you had some experience? I could ask you a question like if we're talking about, uh, let's assume we're talking about human resource management and managing people. Um, you know, what, uh, I present a scenario to you, okay, you got a difficult employee. What would you suggest? That sort of thing, okay. So uh, the idea is that you go in, you do the discussions, you put some thought into it. I'm not interested in lots and lots of content. I'm interested in you giving it some thought. So you reply to the message on different topics and you can reply with your classmates. And as you're moving through the course topics, you'll find great discussions, questions at the end of the topic content. So I put them at the end of the content and um, your task is to read the discussion, think about it and offer up your perspective on it, okay? So there's no wrong or right answer. You focus on what I want you to show you. What I want you to show me is that you apply some of the content we talked about to your answer. So that's that's generally how that works. And then there's this online quiz. Now, you know, this is not a heavy duty midterm exam or stuff like that. I want you to read the material. Once you've read the material, you can go in and do this quiz. Okay, the quiz is directly related to the material and. Usually I think there's 10 questions. Some of them might have less than 10, but generally it's 10 questions that appear and it's a multiple choice, uh, multiple choice type thing. And um, I've never had anyone with any problems with it. It's just, it, it gets you to think, uh, it forces you to think about the material in terms of reading it carefully, okay? So that's, that's how the, each one of those are assessed. There's a 50% component for the discussion and a 50% component for the test. And all that is related to the core competencies in that unit. Um, I, in When we get into each module, you'll see each module will have a, a kind of a breakdown of what we're going to be doing each week. Week one, two, three, four, five, six. So I lay it out. And I also lay out to you what the discussions are. So there they are right there. And you'll see it when you get into the actual module, that will be there. And I'll have that laid out and listen, as I say, if it doesn't meet your schedule for some reason, you cannot do it in the time, you chat with me and we'll get that straightened away for you, okay? So I've kind of laid out and this kind of gives you a clear direction. Let's say, for example, week one, November 4th to the 10th, this is just a sample. This is what I'm gonna be talking about this week in the class. This is what I'm gonna be talking about that week in the class and so on. So, so the classes will match the content. You can track your progress 
There is a, a grade book in this program that allows you to track your progress and um, you'll see where you are in terms of uh, what you have completed. Your task is to get stuff completed before the end of the module. So that's what I want you to do is it's module six week long. Look, if you want to wait until the last minute to get it done, that's fine. Just get it done before the end of the module. And if you can't for some reason because you're working, let me know. Just send me an email or whatever and uh, we'll, we'll arrange something there. Uh, technical support. Um, if you got a question on the course, great. If you got a question on your computer and that sort of thing, call the folks at DTL and all the information is right here and uh, you can contact them. Look, they're there all kinds of hours. And if you don't want to do that, get a hold of me and I'll make sure I point you in the right direction or I'll get them to work it out for you, okay? Each of the courses, this is the way you go into your screen and this is what the, the little course is gonna look like. The, up on the top, you'll see course home, content, assessments, communication, course tools. You went to communication today in order to go up to the virtual classroom, which is where we are now. But there's content in each of the modules and the content is found here. And the way it is, is like this is a little uh, table of contents down the left. And as you click on this one, the stuff that's in this one comes up right here. And the stuff that's in this one comes up and so on. So basically you just, it's like individual little pages that you can go through and, and right now you you're in this orientation program module and I've tried to put some things in there not to overwhelm in the in the main course itself when we get into the the actual um, uh, the actual programs and I don't have ready yet I'm not that fast you can see all the other courses I'm doing this term so I kind of got uh, I kind of got myself uh, um uh, busy i'll call it um uh, i'm looking for just bear with me while i kind of hunt for gotta hunt for okay here's here for example is the operations management module okay here's the operation management course that we're going to be doing this is after christmas but they're all set up exactly the same you'll see the same format and what I do is I put little videos in here, which is a summary of the class session, that uh, the summary of the class session that we had, that covers off all the topics related to the course. So you'll see lots of little videos in there. They're normally less than 20 minutes long. I don't want to keep you too long on it. And if you want to look, for example, here's the content. And as I mentioned, there's, so here's topic one, inventory management. And there's a discussion at the end of that. Okay, so here, for example, is a typical discussion topic question. Consider your business and what are the top five inventory items you would stock? Consider three potential suppliers. Where would you find them? Uh, how much inventory would you stock? Consider the cost of storage. So this is, we're talking about inventory. You know, we've done our little discussion on inventory. We've looked at the material. Now I want you to consider if, if you were a small business person, what what would your business be? What would be your top five inventory items? Where would you get them? That's the kind of what I mean by discussion forum, right? You're not looking at writing a book there. You're interested in just, I want you to think about it more than anything. The thinking will take you the time. Writing it down won't take you unless you're a seek and poke typer, but generally the writing of it won't take very long. The thinking of it is supposed to take longer. And the little quizzes that you find at the end, as I say, uh, they're all electronic. Um, you will, <coughs> you will, uh, uh, bum, bum, bum. I need to find one now. I need to find one. Mm -hmm. and it's not showing its face to me now, but what it is is when you get down here, you'll see little quiz and you'll click on it and it'll bring up 10 multiple choice questions. And that's, that's basically all there is to it. We'll be starting our very first unit in our, for the first module, Human Resource Management, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. We're gonna talk about the, the topics in that first unit 
and you should have access to the course. If you have any questions, you can email me, uh, and you know, an easy way to email me is through the course. Uh, so for example, um, the reason I like the course is because I know it's dealing with this course. I got so many courses. Uh, right here under communications, you'll see email, and it allows you to email. So that's a quick overview of what we're going to be doing, how we're going to be doing it. If you, as I say, if you have any questions, you let me know. I really appreciate you taking some time today to listen to this. Thanks, and we'll see you on Wednesday.